Today we are doing a review about some of the controllers that I've bought for myself over the past few years. However, this video is going to be mainly focused on the Power A Fusion controller used for the Xbox One. That has been my latest controller purchase, so I want to focus a bit more on that. I am also going to make comparisons between the Power A Fusion, the Elite One, and also the Elite Two controller, so I can give people as much information as possible. It's also worth noting that I have no skin in the game other than being a straight up gamer, meaning I am not sponsored by any of the companies that own these products at the time of making this video, and chances are I probably never will be sponsored by them after I am done making this video. In other words, you are getting the truth about all of these products when it comes to my personal experience wasting money on these controllers. So with that being said, let's jump into it. So to start it off with the Power A Fusion wired controller, let me say the only two good things about it in my very humble opinion. <laughs> Number one, it's wired. I forgot how much better a wired controller is over a wireless one because it's been a few years since I last had one, but it's a major improvement in terms of response time. I know most people don't like the cord in the way, but I really did not mind it. The second good thing I have to say about it is the fact that it is the cheapest controller out of the three that I mentioned. Coming out of the box at $80 to $85, I can't say it's a fair price for a simple Xbox controller with nothing more but basic paddles, but like I said, compared to the competition, it's not a bad price point. Now here's why I have to say the Power A Fusion is one of the worst buys I have ever made from a controller standpoint. Number one, this has the worst design out of all Xbox controllers ever made. They literally added a weight inside of the controller just to make it heavier. It serves no other purpose than that. I personally prefer lightweight controllers and this one is the heaviest I have ever used. I've researched what the weight was and apparently the controller comes out to about one and a half pounds without the cord. To me the best controller is the one that you don't even notice and that's slick and comfortable. Considering it's a wired controller, the Power A Fusion, you would think it would be lighter than a wireless controller because there is no battery pack, but it's not. And just for example, if you look back at the Xbox 360 controller design, that controller was considered one of the more comfortable controllers ever to be made. I consider that to be the best design. It literally was a featherweight. At times, you didn't even feel it in your hands. With this controller, total opposite for me. It doesn't feel comfortable when you grip it. Too heavy, too bulky. It's a little bit larger compared to both the Elite 1 and the Elite 2, and it weighs much more than both of them. On top of that, I have a major problem with mine. I don't know if mine is partially defective or what, but since day one, I cannot get my pedals to always work or to register when I press them. Also, the left and right buttons on the D-pad don't always work either, along with the B button. And for example, when I'm playing a game like Counter-Strike or Rogue Company, let's say I'm in the middle of defusing a bomb and I'm like four seconds in on the defuse. Guess what? All of a sudden, while I'm holding the paddle down the entire time, or the B button, it just stops the defuse out of nowhere. If I'm planting the bomb, it's the same thing. It stops me from planting the bomb. If I'm holding down the B button or the paddle, it doesn't matter which one it is. I've also had the right trigger just stop working mid-gunfight before, though that only happened twice. Anyway, there might actually be more buttons on this controller that don't always work compared to ones that actually do work. And that's just unacceptable. You need to have a controller that's controllable. That's the whole purpose of having a controller. Yes, you heard it here first. Controllers are supposed to be controllable. You have to have something that's dependable. And the Power A Fusion is anything but that. I don't care if it works 97% of the time. I need something that will always do what it's supposed to do and to work properly while I have it. That's the way I look at it. And the third and fourth major complaints that I have is the fact that the paddles can come loose mid-game. And it's not that simple to put them back in compared to the Elite controllers that are magnetic with the paddles. 
on the Fusion, it is a pain in the ass to try and put the paddles back into place when you haven't done it enough times or if you don't know how to exactly put them back in. The other thing is, my right stick only is sticky. That's the way it came. The stick is sticky. I realize it sounds like I'm describing something totally wrong, if you know what the fuck I mean, but the stick is sticky. It's fucking weird. I don't know why. It just fucking is. It's awkward every time. I don't feel like using it to aim. I don't know how else to describe it. I really don't, but it just came like that. But between all the issues here, it's probably the worst or second worst controller I have ever used on any Xbox console. Only the scuff controller I can say was just as bad or worse than this. And that was a total waste of time and money in my opinion, just like this. Moving on to the Elite One, in all honesty, I think the Elite One is the best controller out of all three listed here. However, the one major flaw with it is, it will usually break or come apart within about six months. I have had seven or eight of them over the years for my Xbox One. They just simply do not last. They never do. On the positive side, you can customize it on your Xbox, you can link it to your profile, the paddles are the largest on this controller and are easy to put back into place if they fall out. Way more options with adjustable hairline triggers. The D-pad disc, I love that on the Elite One. That's the one thing that the Fusion did not have either, by the way. And you can just put in some batteries and you are good to go. It doesn't need to be charged like the Elite Two does by a cord. The durability on the Elite One was just so bad. That was the main obstacle, like I said. And I loved using it on Battlefront for all those years, but that was also the main reason why my left and right bumpers would always fall off. It was because of that game. The grips always fell off like two months in as well. It's a shame. It is a more expensive controller, or was, I should say, since most sites do not even sell them anymore brand new. But when you had a new one, it was really nice while it lasted. Moving on to the Elite 2, the paddles on the back are extremely small on the Elite 2 compared to the Elite 1. In particular, the top paddles were much, much smaller. If you are used to using the Elite 1 paddles like I was, it's very uncomfortable to try to use the Elite 2 paddles. I felt so off every time I tried to use them. However, it is worth mentioning that you can take the larger pedals off of your Elite 1 and put them onto your Elite 2. Two of the pedals actually fit perfectly on there. The one thing that really sucked about this controller as well is the fact that when you try and charge it, you cannot just take standard AA batteries and use those. It has to be charged via cord from your laptop or whatever, which is a major inconvenience in my opinion. And that leads me to another thing worth mentioning. The analog sticks on the Elite 2, this is the one thing that I will say is worth the upgrade if you get good ones that do not have stick drift. The sticks are the main attraction here. They are way better than the standard Elite controller sticks from a comfortability standpoint with more options available as well in terms of adjusting those. But here's the funny thing about the Elite 2. The sticks are both the reason why this controller is decent and why it is horrible. The Elite 2 has so much stick drift. My first one had it coming right out of the box. Microsoft was actually taken to court over this issue with their controllers specifically citing the Elite 2 controller in a few court documents. Stick drift is the Achilles heel for controllers and I've read a lot of reviews from other people having that same issue with this particular controller. Most were within roughly the same amount of time as mine, which was right out of the box. With that being said, that's why I can't say this is a good controller at all. I preferred the Elite One way more anyways, but they both had durability issues, obviously. And the Elite Two is by far the most expensive controller on the market today, outside of Scuff and Battle Beaver controllers, I believe. You should get so much more for what you put into it money-wise, but unfortunately most people don't, and that included me when I had the Elite 2 controller. And just before I forget, here's just a 
size comparison between the Power A Fusion and the Elite One. The Power A is the one on top, the Elite is on the bottom. The Fusion is slightly bigger and it weighs much more. I did not have the Elite Two at the time of taking this picture. Anyways guys, it really doesn't matter which controller you get here as long as you don't go with the Fusion. They all have issues. I don't recommend any of these, especially the Fusion or the Elite 2. The Elite 1 is better while it lasts, but it's expensive and good luck finding any new Elite 1s on Amazon or on any site for that matter. Even then they will probably break within about 6 months, especially if you game nearly every day like me. And I'll say this too, even with all the scuff controller variants, I am fully convinced that there is not a controller with paddles on the market today that is worth buying. All of them are expensive as hell for the most part. All of them have issues, all of them seemingly break within six months to a year. Some get stick drift, or in my case it came with stick drift right out of the box when it came to the Elite 2s. If I wasn't so accustomed to using paddles now, I would probably just go back to using a standard Xbox controller all the time but unfortunately, the paddles are part of the way I game now. It's at the point where I wish I could create my own controller and, and build it with better material so it would last for at least two years. I wish I had the knowledge and the connections to make that happen, but if I ever come across a near-perfect controller that lasted or felt like the Xbox 360 controller did, I promise I will give it a far better review than any of these, but anyway, I guess that's just how things are made now, but we'll see what the future brings. Thanks for checking this out, fuck these crappy controllers, enjoy the rest of the Halo gameplay, and have a great day and I'll see you next time. Peace. Request confirmed.
confirmed. Over. 